All right. Well, thanks everyone for coming. Yeah. Um, fantastic to have four champions from various sports all in one room. Never been done in sports media before. I'm I'm not a champion yet. <laughs> I, <laughs> I like the attitude though. Yet. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's always, right. exactly. That's always good. Too near. So welcome everybody. Thank you for taking the time out of your crazy schedules. I can't believe we've got you all here. It's incredible. Um, as you know, we're we're talking about speed, or that's what we're sort of launching off today. Um, and I just want to get a feeling from each of you as a total scaredy cat, what speed actually feels like to all of you. Mark, I'll start with you because obviously our 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 readers will know you best. What does speed feel like to you when you're going top speed in a sprint? Is it a rush? Is it adrenaline? Is it actually slow motion? Is it addictive? What is it to you? I think it's different in the job you do than, uh, than kind of just in general. I think as a cyclist, I, especially for like Rouleau magazine, like what I'm going to say is going to sound quite unromantic. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's just a process really. You don't really... You have a concept of how fast you're going and um, you're just trying to make them them decisions as quick as possible you know um, and the speed's kind of it's kind of irrelevant you know uh, it's just you got to make it a little bit quicker when you're going faster but for instance like you look at Carl when he goes on when he's going downhill on a bike he's loving life you know like he, he, he's nuts you can't follow him but then you saying I don't like going uphill? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, then go if I like going on the motorbike. Say I went on the back of Randy Romola on the on the two seat Ducati once, and for me it was the best experience of my life. You know, um, like do you know that feeling when you know you know that feeling in your tummy when you know when you are I don't know if you you stand up at the edge of like a tall building or and you, you feel know, like you, you're going to jump. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. On that. And, and you know when you're on the limit of every anything, you know, but it's especially not if you're doing it, if someone else is doing it, you're out of control, you have that feeling, like that's the best <laughs> feeling in the world, like that kind of really on, on the on the edge of, of like know, on the like, edge of danger almost. Yeah, I, like, it's like an addictive, it's an addictive feeling, you know, if you're on a roller coaster in a car. In a, on, a, on a bike it's if you're doing it yourself it's one thing but then having it done by someone else where you're out of control I, I'll buzz off it like, like yeah. it's, it's the highest it's the highest like you can get off any drug that's sure I'm getting that feeling in my tummy just thinking about it <laughs> that, like you say that standing on the edge of a building and just not knowing what's going to happen next yeah. Jamie I read an interview with you where you said that speed to you was almost like meditation that when you're at top speed you're almost going into this meditative state. Is that how it feels? Um, I think Mark's made a really good point there, but I would say I feel the opposite about it. In the sense, <laughs> when you're in control of it, I definitely feel like that. <laughs> when I'm not in control of it, it's a very different, def very different feeling. I think I went in the passenger seat of a rally car uh, last week, and Christ, I've never been so scared in my life. Um, <laughs> I know if I was driving the car, I wouldn't necessarily feel the speed, and my perception wouldn't wouldn't be like that. So. Yeah, for sure. When I'm driving, um, you know, whatever, or not even driving, whatever I'm doing, um, you know, the feeling of speed when you first say you've had a bit of time out and you first go out the pit lane, um, it always feels quick. But then the second run you do, you kind of adjust really quickly. Your body adapts to whatever you're driving. And, you know, I'm not driven in Formula One yet, but I think it's that same sort of feeling is it's so quick until your body adapts. And once your body adapts, um, I think you kind of get into this state of, there's so much other stuff to think about and be worrying about but yeah it get, almost becomes yeah meditative I guess is uh I can't actually remember using that word but uh, <laughs> it was in it was in a really cool article in Vogue you should read it Jamie okay, you. Um, <laughs> but do you think then like Mark said that almost when when you're doing it when it's your speed it's so much a part of the job you're not necessarily registering the speed as such yeah for sure um yeah I mean on a lap like you end up just thinking about you know how to do the lap as quick as possible and the speed itself isn't the factor that you're thinking about you know you're trying to process all sorts of other information it's not uh you know the first thing that's on your mind you're not conscious of that so it's yeah I guess something that becomes quite uh yeah natural I guess um you know as, as you're driving 
Valtteri, if you Google the top speed of a Formula One car, it says that they go at 360 kilometers an hour. You've taken it to 378 kilometers an hour. Maybe you've bettered that since. What on earth does that feel like? Bearing in mind that for almost everyone, they will never know what that feels like to have that power within their own power, if you know what I mean. They'll like be in a plane or whatever. What does that speed feel like to you? It's always so so hard to describe. Yeah. <clears throat> if you think about fast, then double that. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like that. Um, obviously, like uh, also what Jamie said, that when you're and when you're kind of focused on what you're doing, you don't really actually think about the speed, but for sure you have uh, a sense of it. But uh, it's, it's a beautiful feeling um, for me. Yeah, it's uh, it's really addictive and. It's actually speed was the thing for me as a kid that really triggered the, the passion for racing. Uh, because when I first got to try a go-kart when I was five, when I tried it, and I obviously never as a kid so far had felt that kind of sensation of speed, uh, immediately kind of got, got hooked to that. And uh, then obviously throughout the cap career, you get to faster karts, uh, eventually to junior formulas and everything. and. I, it was so addictive and you're all, always just step by step, step getting, getting more speed. And uh, so, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful thing to feel. So like Mark, then you find it addictive, do you? You kind of have to keep hunting it almost. Definitely. And it's with anything I do, you know, most of the hobbies I do, you know, I do a bit of rallying. Um, I love cycling as well. And uh, yeah, driving any kind of things, I'm always searching for, for the speed. Hal, what about you then? Mark said that you love it. You love the speed. You're doing, what is it, 340, 350 kilometers an hour on a bike. I mean, surely there's, is there a, is there a thrill of the fear almost that comes with that? No, but what I will say is, I think the other three are just adrenaline junkies. <laughs> and what, you're not? No, because at the speed, uh, the, the, the thing is in MotoGP, every year they seem to get faster and faster. The bikes get faster and faster, which in a sense is great because, you know, um, everybody wants to go down the straight as, as fast as humanly possible because it's the easiest time made up as such. Um, but I will agree exactly with what Jamie said. When you go, when you have a long time off, we have three months off in the winter as such. I didn't ride from... I didn't ride from the last race until I went to Qatar, which was uh, two and a half months. And the first out, the first lap you go out, you feel like you're on a roller coaster. You know that shock when you go on a roller coaster yeah. when it, the G-forces hit you. But two laps later, you feel nothing. You feel like it's absolutely normal. Um, and it's, the, it's about the brain getting up to speed. So with the brain getting up to speed in the first three, four, five laps of, of, uh, of your run, um, it's the acceleration that really gets you. When you're doing 350k an hour down straight, it seems that you see nothing different to what you do from zero to 150 kilometers an hour. Because the straight, you're essentially going in a straight line. Um, there's only one place that I really think that actually Mark's been around um, that is not dangerous, you know, because my, you know, riding around a motor, on, a, on a motorbike as fast as humanly possible is dangerous. But the one thing that you get a little bit of a, a, a sense of reality of the speed you're going was, is it the end of Mugello straight on a motorbike? Now I know Val Valtteri will have done it last year with, uh, with the Formula One and you come over a crest, but it's also a blind crest that is like a little bit kinked left. And we were doing uh, just under 360k an hour there two years ago. But when there's four bikes side by side there, it, then you have a real sense of reality. On the um, front wheel as well. Yeah, because you go from the on, the on the back wheel, wheeling over it, and then you brake that hard that you are literally on the front wheel at over 330, 40k an hour. Um, but yeah, I don't have a... My thrill it doesn't seem to be the speed. I don't, you know, I don't mind going at speed. I don't particularly get scared of it. Um, but there has to be a... Um, a thing where you you definitely enjoy it, as, uh, you know, at, at some some level because you wouldn't do it. Obviously, if you were scared, you you definitely wouldn't do it. But um, 
I think the MotoGP record just got taken in Qatar at the test, actually, the speed record, which was 158.9 kilometers an hour um, last week in, in, in the test, which is seriously fast. Um, considering the, the actual speed trap is a little bit before when you start to break, so I would say it would be 360k an hour, to be honest. But Go on by some... Carl, what he's saying. What you have to know about Carl is that like he's loose, like he's like the loosest person you'll ever meet in anything he does. <laughs> So okay, like, you won't get that all, voice all, all, all controlled, voice. all controlled. <laughs> what, can, can I just like, tell you something? This interview could t- turn into a big argument between me and Mark. <laughs> you know, you know, you have that if it doesn't. <laughs> you know, you know, whatever you do, you always have kind of have a limit, don't you? That you know, if you kind of push it over that limit, like you, you, you maybe a little bit in danger. You, I don't think he sometimes you don't know where that limit is. You know, in, in everything he does, like you know. I just want to confirm one thing though. The last time I crashed a bicycle, who took me out? <laughs> Uh-oh. Is that the last, wasn't the last time you crashed? It, it definitely was the last time I crashed. <laughs> Maybe you're loose with the company you keep then, Carl. <laughs> you don't watch that. But is that not true for all of you? Is there not is there not something in and it's really difficult question to answer even because you've no idea how anyone else is wired. You know, you don't know how anyone else's head works. But is there not an element with all of you that is that is quite comfortable with pushing yourself into the danger zone because most people will stay within their safety zone. You can't, you can't do that and win. When you're in control of something, you're in control of the bike or the car that, that, you're, that you're guiding at the time, you know? I think what you're not in control is, if, is the other people around you. Um, like, and that's something you have to preempt and be, I think that's probably the the most that's that's the one thing that scares you is is having to put your trust in the other other competitors in whatever sport it is you know that uh you can only do what you can do i guess and uh like i think that that's where that kind of comes into is, is we're not just on our own going fast is everyone else going fast around us but it's that acceptance of danger i think that i'm that i'm trying to get at as well because that's what puts most people off as well as of course the incredible amount of hard work it takes and how talented you need to be and the lifestyle that comes with it but that putting yourself in a danger zone whether it's your own danger zone or because of those around you jamie is that something that you found i mean you started carding at what 11 12 is that something that you've always been quite comfortable with, in a way? Think, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I think it does boil down to what age you get into it, maybe, or what your perception is from a young age. Um, you know, I was really lucky when I was younger. Um, you know, my parents took us skiing when we were really young. Um, you know, like, you know, Mark was touching on earlier, I grew up in the Isle of Man. So my parents were quite sort of um, casual with their approach as to what my brother <laughs> and I got up to. Um, and so... Yeah, our perception for speed and everything that we did was always just, you know, quite different to maybe a lot of other people. And I think that's just stayed with me. But for sure, if I got into motorsport or anything like that at this age, um, I probably would have my wits about me a little bit more. But yeah, I think Mark's completely right. It's other people that, you know, it makes a difference. And I think in, I guess, uh, our sport, you quite often race against similar people, you know, you can trust or, or not. But I still find it mind blowing, you know, cyclists, how close they cycle to each other. And in the peloton, I think, okay, even if, which I can't, uh, could physically get to the level um, to be able to race on a bike. I don't think I could be able to race in the peloton like they do. And I think that's just something that they're so conditioned to have been able to do from, you know, such a young age, or it's what they sort of, um, you know, learn from, from, yeah, like I said, a young age, I think it just becomes, becomes natural. So maybe, yeah, it's what you're used to. Maybe you all find each other's sports actually really dangerous and, and because you because it's what you know, you find safety within your own sport because it's what you've excelled at, it's what you've thrived at. Do you find right, racing a push bike, Jamie, more dangerous than what you do? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, 100%. And I think, yeah, your perception of speed's different as well. Um, you know, I find... Uh, speed obviously in a racing car I'm quite happy with but on a bike you know I apparently I do descend quite quick I don't actually think I do <laughs> um I haven't found the limit just yet but um yeah honestly I watch um you know the pros in the peloton they're sort of bowed in shoulders they're pushing each other and 
yeah, the thought of doing that um, to me is mind blowing. So I think it's just, yeah, what you become used to, I'm sure. I don't get why all, all three of you, like you get to do something like with an engine and you want to ride bicycles. I don't get it. I just don't get it. I do anything, anything to just be able to have an engine at some time. You know? <laughs> do something with an engine. <laughs> And you want to ride yeah, bike, bike, Mark. Oh. <laughs> what is it about cycling that you all love then? Yeah. Because that's a common thread, obviously. That's why we're chatting. Valtteri, what is it about cycling? Because given the speeds that you go in a Formula One car with the best will in the world, however good you are on a bike, you're not going to get that fast. You know, obviously, the, all the training we do and physical training, I always can't have an engine underneath me <laughs> to get, get fit enough. So... Uh, there's, of course, different ways of, of training um, your end endurance. And I've always loved running. You know, I've always found that's an easy and nice way to, you know, um, yeah, get, get better in terms of your aerobic fitness. Um, but then cycling, you know, it's, uh, it's different. And it's just another way of really actually enjoying the scenery um, at the same time and seeing lots of places that you would normally see and versus if you drive a car on a nice road somewhere you're basically just looking at the road if you're going fast but then with a bike you I feel like you have much more time to actually you know see the place actually how, how it is and uh, yeah I just love it uh, it's really effective training and um, and I find it good fun uh, especially downhills, I enjoy a lot. <laughs> and, uh, and now, yeah, obviously now my girlfriend is um, is uh, Tiffany Cromwell, so she's a cyclist. So obviously there's more extra interest now, and it's another sport that once you get better in it, and you know when um, the the climbs are starting to feel easier, and you can go further and faster, it's also quite addictive. And uh, I love training anyway, so I don't mind bit of pain so I think there's enough valid reasons why I like cycling. Do you ever try to race Tiff? Do you ever try to take a row and see who's fastest on a sprint or do you know your place? On sprint she's got no chance. So, uh, <laughs> I always go for all, the, all her sprint sessions. <laughs> when it's climbing they have their own. So. <laughs> so what's your top speed Valtteri on a bike? How fast have you gone? Fastest I've gone on a bike is maybe 90k or something. Um, so yeah, still want to crack the 100 one day. Mark, what's the fastest you, you've ever gone, either in a mm -hmm. race or a training? I have to tell you exactly, it was the stage of the Tour of Swiss in 2009, and I think we were on the other side of the the Gotthard Pass, um, and I was like 124 kilometers an hour, but we were all in a bunch, and that day Fabian Cancellara came past the side of the bunch. He was doing a black way over 130. He would have been, I think, about 134, maybe. But he was a lot faster than it. But all of us got in, in 120, a big pair on together. Wow. Plus that high altitude. Yeah, yeah, real high altitude, 2000 meters, like so. Yeah, yeah. When you looked down and saw that speed, was there was there a flash of of even the edge of fear somewhere where you thought and there wasn't actually a strange like <laughs> It was just a big straight road. It's actually you'd get a bigger sense of speed if there's some turns or or it's a bit more technical. Like they're the ones that are a lot more enjoyable. It's not actually the speed on a descent that I think you get the buzz from. It's the change in the speed and the the acceleration, the decelerations, the movement of the bicycle. The same as on a motorbike or in a car. You know, it's that movement. Um, you know, forward, back, side to side. It's that it's that 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 gives you that kind of buzz, I guess, rather than the actual speed well from my perspective anyway jamie you've been told you're quite handy going downhill what's your top speed my strava says i've done 95 but i don't oh. believe it because i've tried to go as quick as that before and i've not got anywhere near it so <laughs> i don't i don't believe it. i think that might be a glitch on strava but no, yeah. it's, it's, it's reasonable like you know like <laughs> the way if you, if you go to a mountain like Valtteri, if you, if you go to switzerland or something you'd easily pass 100 and same with you jamie like carl you've been over 100 i know that what's but, your top carl i don't know i think it was around 120 as well so but i would tell you this i'd rather do 120 with a set of leathers on than a set of lycra <laughs> i can tell you that um, i agree but 
it doesn't scare me, but you think, and I have crashed the bicycle before, so you get completely skinned, but, uh, as you know, but I can crash at 300. I crashed in Australia in, uh, in Phillip Island at the end of 2018 at, at over 200 mile an hour. And uh, yeah, I broke my ankle. I didn't have one, one cut on me, zero. Um, so, but you can imagine crashing at 100k an hour on a bicycle, you know, you'd be skinned from head to toe. So, yeah, you don't really think about it at the time when you're doing 100k an hour on a descent or anything like that. Um, but you but can't you think, crack and you crash, surely. But then you think, then you think after, that couldn't, have, you know, if it would have went wrong, you, you would have <laughs> known about it. So, because you've had what, some 150 crashes in your career or something, is that right? Are you talking to me uh, yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I have no idea. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> Somebody's um, been counting. I read that somewhere. Yeah, probably. Probably. You know, I would say most motorcycle races have had over 100 uh, crashes. You know, I'm, I was the second oldest guy in MotoGP when I, when I retired. Um, so if you take the kids, kids, the 20-year-old, 21-year-old, 22-year-olds now, you know, they'll be up at over... 50 60 crashes um and they've still got another 10 years to go so you can imagine it's going to be a a big a big amount um but yeah you don't really honestly you don't think about it you don't think about uh about the crash you've just had you think about getting straight back on the bike which is one of the worst things ever because um you know you're going from it's exactly the same as a bicycle that you get this adrenaline spike when you crash a bicycle. I've crashed a bicycle and you get back on, on the bicycle and you've got to ride home or something. You have an adrenaline spike, but then about an hour later or whenever it is, you have an almighty crash of the adrenaline. Yeah. And it's the same racing, a, racing a motorcycle. Um, you know, I'll, I'll crash in practice, run back to the pits, get the spare bike and can go out and do the fastest lap of the whole session. that I've just, you know, uh, of my, of my session. But then you have the the crash. So if it happens in a race on the first lap of the race, at the end of the race, you know, you can be on the come down as such. Um, but yeah, I don't really, when I got on bicycle, I never really think about it. And, and one of the reasons why I love cycling so much is it's the complete opposite to what I do. You know, you ride around at 30, 35K an hour training and stuff like that. It's It's a lot slower speed, you know, Hence the reason I don't have fast cars as such or motorcycles that I ride on the road because I get that when I'm, when I'm racing or now testing, you still get to, to ride at speed. So I have no massive passion for going to get a fast car or, or a motorcycle that you can do, you know, go really fast on, on the road on. So cycling to me is like the absolute opposite of what I do. You know, you can still ride on two wheels and, and go slowly doing it. And that echoes with what you said, Valtteri, that, that you enjoy cycling because it slows you down. You get to see things in a much more calm way, I guess. You get to take everything in. Is that this? So I'm, so I'm going to guess here, and this could be completely wrong, but the three who ride with an engine, drive with an engine, do you like cycling to calm you down? And Mark, you're doing the opposite whenever you get off your, your race bike. That's when you're getting onto the engine. So it's kind of like a balance of speed between the job and the... The hobby if you like yeah i guess to a degree um i also really like it from a social point of view i think uh, we're quite lucky in our sport that we can pick kind of what training we do um you know it doesn't have to be running it doesn't have to be that specific um around sort of the cardio based stuff so yeah going out on a long ride for me is a much better solution than going out for a long run although i still run as well um so yeah it's the social side of it it's yeah, like Valtteri said, being able to actually spend time and he's fortunate, obviously, he lives in Monaco where there's a lot nicer roads than here in the UK. But still being able to, yeah, go spend a few hours out on the bike, I think, um, is part of it. And also, I think you just get obsessed with it. I think I don't know if that's a racing driver thing, but there is a lot of racing or are a lot of racing drivers that like cycling. And I think it's because you get obsessed with what bike you've got, what kit you've got, everything. And, yeah, it, yeah. and it becomes this sort of yeah whole new uh, new sport that you just become, yeah fully involved in yeah one more thing i forgot to mention also why cycling um especially with because i love mountain biking as well but for the training like let's say if you example 
train your cardio with running on a treadmill versus if you're training on your bike on um, you know tricky roads or on a mountain bike in the forest single trails i feel like also for the mind is, is super good and actually for your focus even though at the same time it's another sport you're doing and that way recharging you mentally but it means you need to stay alert you need to stay focused uh, if you don't want to crash so i feel like it's actually good to you know keep your brain active because there's so many other workouts that we don't need to think anything you just do it but um, i think it's good for the brain and obviously concentration and focus in everyone's sport that is involved here is super important so i think that's um, that's quite important i feel do either of you, Jamie or Valtteri, do either of you ride motorbikes as well? No, I did a bit of motocross when I was growing up, um, but my arms can't hang on. <laughs> yeah, same thing. A tiny bit of motocross when I was younger. Um, I've always had a motorbike just to drive on normal roads, but I've never been actually on track with a, with a motorbike. You were saying See, we hi. should get everybody together on, on, a, on a track. And we can all. Well, I beat you, Carl. So. We, we could all watch Mark. We could all watch Mark. <laughs> <laughs> right here we go. Then you're all on motorbikes. Who's going to win? Me. <laughs> Money on Carl. Uh, on well, Carl. Yeah. Me and Mark will always have this argument that I say I'm better at his sport than what he is at mine, which is sure true. As, <laughs> as we know. So, so you've, uh, you've raced each other, yeah? On, so on, on the, both bikes. So on the overall, we, we were trying to come up with this plan of something around a circuit where he had to be within a certain amount of time, that lap time on a motorcycle, and then on the bicycle, obviously, I'd win that, so you needed to be in, 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 with, in, with, the same, uh, in with the same time to see, see who got the overall, but we haven't managed to do it yet, but... Are you actually one. good on a bike, on a on a road bike, or is it or is it all that? Mark, you can you can. No, he is good. Him. He is good. I give him that. He, he's but he's just oh, just frustrated. He just races everywhere. Just loves it. <laughs> you know, like like he just goes full gas, full gas till he explodes. He's like hanging, swings a bit, then just goes full gas again. Like, but I I, I have to admit, like, Carl is good on a, on a bicycle. Like, like, like. Like a good level, he's he's physically he's better than than some lower level professionals. I'm sure he is good. But Carl, you could be racing again this season, can you? You could get a wild card. Do you think you'd be itching to get back on it again? I guess it's hard to step away um, from it. It is and it isn't. You know, obviously everybody builds up saying, "Oh, you can get a wild card. It'll be great for you to get a wild card." But I retired for a reason. I retired because I didn't want to race. Um, you still always have that, uh, you know, I'm sort of in the transition period of being a full-time motorbike racer that, you know, it was my job and that I love to now, you know, uh, changing to be a test rider. But I didn't have to be a test rider. I just thought I'd, I'd enjoy it. Um, I developed the manufacturer that I was riding for, Honda, for, for, for six years I was there and I was doing a lot of the testing for them even when I was racing. So I just thought it'd be a, a good transition to be able to still ride a motorcycle, uh, not sit at home and do nothing. And, you know, I get to ride the bike 25 days a year. So whether I'll race, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. But um, I have to be the replacement rider for any of the riders that get injured either as well. So going by a normal year, yes, I'll be racing at some point, but... I didn't do it because I wanted to continue racing. If I wanted to continue racing, I would have. So I'm not like overly looking to go and do a wild card. Um, and it just depends what, uh, you know, how things are going. But my job has changed now. It's so strange that you, I now have to help four riders that were my rivals um, in, in the sport. So, you know, it's nice. It's nice. I've got two. Obviously, I've got Fabio Quattararo and Maverick Vinales that, and Franco that are the younger guys. And then uh, Valentino, who is the, is the oldest guy and the oldest guy in MotoGP, but with the most experience. And it's, uh, it's funny talking to them all. And, uh, you know, obviously, I'm, I've known them for over the years, but I've never worked directly with them. So it's good, though. It's good fun. It's good to be able to, to give them the feedback and try and make them improve. And, 
Yeah, just trying to get them to, to ride bicycles now, but it's they all not do, easy. Don't they? Yeah, but not 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 in Yamaha. They don't. Maverick and Fabio, they, we did the Zwift thing with them, didn't we? But um, yeah, quite a few of them ride. It's uh, it's quite a popular sport in in uh, in motorsport in general, I think. So I know we're near the end, but it's just led me to a thought. I'm wondering, Valtteri, Jamie, and Mark, will you all race? continue racing when you retire. I know it's a long way off for you, Jamie, in particular. Valtteri, though, do you think you'll race in some form whenever you stop F1, down to the shops or trying to beat the red light? Obviously, you never can predict the future, but if I would have to say now, yes. I, I, just, I, I love competing. I'm sure at some point it's going to be like, okay, that's enough. But, um, you know, it, it depends on which kind of level and... Uh, yeah, I, I just really enjoy uh, racing uh, and driving and that feeling of speed, as I mentioned earlier, and, and being in control and trying to improve yourself and your driving and that way the lap time and, and the result. So uh, for sure, at some in some form, you know, I would I would imagine yes. It's that constant chasing of the of the faster time, Jamie. Do you think you'll race in some form? I mean, it seems ridiculous to ask you this. When you're when you're at your stage in your career, but do you think it's in your DNA? Do you think it's something that is just a part of your makeup? You'll you'll have to keep doing in some way. Yeah, I think I enjoy it too much uh, not to. Um, but probably in some sort of very casual kind of, I think whether I can actually do this or not, I won't be able to say until I retire. But I'd love to do a completely different sort of discipline. Um, whether it's like get an old rally car or something like that. And I don't know if you can be an amateur rally driver, but attempt to do something like that. Something where you know, there's no pressure for me to actually need to be that good, but I can just enjoy doing it. And uh, yeah, maybe something like that or maybe some historic racing. I'm not sure. Hmm. Mark, will you keep riding your bike when you retire? Yeah, without power meter. <laughs> yeah, for fun. For the solar, like, the, like, like he's there for the social aspect for sure. And then racing, I'll always race it when I do. That's the deal. <laughs> just a part of how you're, you're made up. Yeah. guys thank you so much for joining in the chat it's been really good i find it really good fun anyway i hope you've enjoyed it um it's been really it's insightful to get your opinions on something that seems well it is it's so alien to most of us so thank you thank you thank you guys nice thank to you. meet you thank you thank you very much nice to meet you all and all thank the best you. keep strong yeah you too uh, good luck huh? yeah. good luck yeah, good luck Thank you. Good luck to you three competing. <laughs> <laughs>